Welcome back. The objectives of this video is to explore the law of signs as it applies to the ambiguous case. The ambiguous case occurs when we have two sides and a non-included angle. As we saw previously, if we had two angles and an included and a non-included side, so angle angle side, or if we had two angles and an included side, angle side angle, we would use the law of sines. Well, we'd also use the law of sines if we have what we call side side angle. The other objective is, of this video is to find the area of an ob oblique triangle. So recall that the law of sines was written side A over the sine of A equals side B over the sine of B equals sine side C over the sine of C. And we could reverse that as well, where we do the sine of the angle over the corresponding side, or the opposite side, equals the sine of angle B over its opposite side, over the, equals the sine of angle C over its side. So again, two of any of these three make up our proportion, depending if we're solving for a side or an angle. We always want to have our unknown up in the numerator. Recall that when we had side-side angle back in geometry, we couldn't use this to prove the triangles congruent. So if I had a triangle that looked something like this, where this angle and this side, that side were congruent, we could have a figure that looks something like this. So we have our side-side angle here, but we don't know if the triangle is obtuse or acute based on the given information. It could be either of these, thus that side-side angle in the ambiguous case. So with side-side angle, there is a possibility that we could have two solutions. So if we have a particular triangle, and I'll go ahead and label my triangle, and we're given that angle A is 20.5, and side A is 12, and side B is 31, we want to solve this particular triangle. So we're going to start by solving for B. So we're going to solve for angle B. We'll take the sine of B over side B equals the sine of 20.5 all over 12 multiplying both sides by 31. So I isolate sine of B, multiply both sides by 31. I get the sine of angle B equals 31 sine of 20.5 all over 12. So I want to put that in my calculator as arc sine of B or arc sine equals this particular fraction, 31 sine of 20.5 all over 12. So going to my calculator, I do the arc sine of 31 sine of 20.5, close parentheses, all divided by 12, close parentheses again, make sure we're in degree mode, hit enter, and I get angle B is going to be 64.8 degrees. So angle B equals 64.78 or in our case 64.8. Well we said this there were two possibilities here and if we do a, some quick arithmetic 180 minus 64.8 gives us 115.2 and when we look at our at our triangle 115.2 is a possibility here. We could have an angle of 115.2 or angle B could be 64.8. Both of those, the way things are sitting right now, seem to work. So that's 115.2. Let's go ahead and finish our triangle based on that information. So we just need to find side C. So I'm, that is my unknown. Actually if that's 115.2 
and angle A is 20.5, then I know angle C has to be 44.3, doing some quick arithmetic. So now the sum of my angles equals 180. So I'll set up the law of sines again, and C over the sine of 44.3 equals 12 over the sine of 20.5, multiply both sides by the sine of 44.3, so I isolate C, lowercase c equals 12, sine of 44.3 all over sine of 20.5, and I can put that right in my calculator the way it stands. So 12 sine of 44.3 divided by the sine of 20.5. Be careful to close your parentheses after the 44.3. Make sure you're in degree mode. And we get side C is 23.9. So we have solved for one possibility of that triangle. And does that make sense? It looks like our smallest side is opposite the smallest angle. The medium side is opposite the medium angle, and the large side is opposite the large angle. But remember, one possibility for angle B was 64.8. So in redrawing my triangle, we have angle A, angle B, and angle C, and angle A was 20.5. Angle B could have been 64.8 right, grab that from over here, and angle C was unknown at the time. Our other known information was side B was 31, side A was 12. We need to find side C. We can find angle C pretty quickly. We'll just do 180 minus 20.5 minus 64.8, and that equals 94.7. So using the law of sines, we want to find side C. So C over the sine of 94.7 equals, when I'm going to use uh, 12 and 20.5, because that's given information. So 12 over the sine of 20.5. Do my algebra, multiply both sides by the sine of 94.7, so I get C equals 12 times the sine of 94.7 all over the sine of 20.5, and I find C could be 34.2. So another obtuse triangle, but very different than what it looked like earlier. Put my 34.2 in. Let's see, does this make sense? It looks like it does. The largest angle creates the largest side, the smallest angle creates the smallest side, and that does indeed make sense. So there's two possibilities for that particular triangle based on that given information. Now there is possibility that there's just a single solution in a given triangle. So they tell us that angle A is 42 and side A is 22, and side B is 12, so I'll go ahead and draw my triangle and label the sides and angles. So I'm labeling angle A, B, C, angle A is 42, side A is 22, side B is 12, and sure enough I've got my side side angle here. It, appe it appears that angle B has got to be less than 42 degrees based on the information I have here. Angle B must be less than 42 degrees because side B is smaller, it's 12. So angle B has got to be less than 42. So let's go ahead and find B right away. So that's going to be what we look for. So we're going to find angle B, sine of angle B over side B equals the sine of 42 over 22. We'll go ahead and multiply both sides by 12. So we get the sine of B 
equals 12 sine of 42 all over 22. So putting that in our calculator, the arc sine of B is 12 sine of 42 all over 22. Careful about how I put that in, arc sine of 12 sine of 42, close that parentheses on 42, divided by 22, and I get my angle of 21.4 degrees. So angle B equals 21.4. So angle C now would have to be 180 minus 42 minus 21.4, which is 116.6 degrees. And based on the information that we have, there's no real other possibility for angle C. Because 180 minus 21.4 is 158.6. So now we can go ahead and, and to have a, that angle be 158.6 would be impossible given the 42. There is no other possibility for that particular so angle. Side C over the sine of 116.6 equals 22 over the sine of 42. So side C equals 22 sine of 116.6. I'm just multiplying both sides by 116.6 all over the sine of 42. I'll save you a little bit of time by not showing that work. Put that in our calculator just the way it stands. This is calculator ready. And we get C as side C is 29.4. I'm not really following the nearest tenth. My given information is just to the nearest digit, and I'm not following that, or to the nearest ones. Uh, I'm, I am rounding to the nearest tenth here. Does our answer make sense? It seems to. Large angle, large side, small angle, small side. So we seem to be good there. Now there is a possibility that we could have no solution for side-side angle. In order to save time, I'm not going to go through an example, but it is possible to have no solution. And if you remember your triangle inequality from geometry and the sides, you might see that uh, if it violates the triangle inequality theorem or you might do the work and get no solution or get an error on your calculator. Uh, that is also possible, but if we had a, uh, a triangle that you were maybe given that side A is 15 and side B is 25 and angle A is 85, I'll save that for you to do the work for that one, but that's going to be no solution. And then finally, we have a formula to find the area of an oblique triangle. That's the final objective here in this video. Our formula the area of the triangle equals one half BC sine of A, or it could be one half AB sine of C, or it could be one half AC sine of B. So it really depends on what information you have and you'll use to find the area. So if we have the lengths of two sides and an angle and it fits these parameters, we can get that to work. So here we have side angle side information, which is what these formulas come from. And we have angle C, so we're gonna use the sine of angle C, so we need sines A and B. We're actually gonna use this middle one here. So our area equals 1 half of 90 times 52 times the sine of 102. So our area equals, well, 45 times 52 times the sine of 102. 
we can simply put that in our calculator as 45 times 52 sine of 102 and I get 2288.87 meters squared. It is possible using our trigonometry and that formula to find the area of a triangle that is not a right triangle. So that wraps up our video on finding the area of a non-right triangle using our trig and also the ambiguous case of the law of signs and we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.